Gunderson from Fairwinds Associates, and it's Sunday, April 3rd. A couple of videos ago, I talked to you about the types of radiation, and I talked about gamma rays, alpha particles, and beta particles. Well, there's one more type, and that's called a neutron, that I need to talk about today. When a uranium atom splits, it gives off two heavy pieces called daughter products, but it also gives off a couple of neutrons. Those neutrons hit the next uranium atom and cause it to split, and then we get a chain reaction. So when you see neutrons, that's an indication that a chain reaction is occurring inside a nuclear reactor. That's how you determine that it really is a chain reaction. Well, some data over the last couple of days and weeks have come up that indicate that one of the reactors at Fukushima may still be experiencing a chain reaction. First off, there was a report in, the, uh, in one of the English Japanese papers that discussed neutron bursts being detected about a mile away from the reactor. Now that got my curiosity because when I was a startup engineer back in 1974 on Millstone 2, we had neutron problems and we were actually detecting neutrons at the guard shed at the fence boundary. So I know that nuclear reactors can emit neutrons and they travel a long way. In and of itself, that report wasn't enough, and it was the only paper that covered it. Well, this week, a, a prestigious scientific paper came out, and it talked about the, the, the discovery of a, of a strange isotope called chlorine-38. Chlorine-38 doesn't exist in nature, and it comes from chlorine-37 absorbing a neutron. Well, chlorine-37 is in seawater, and seawater is inside the nuclear reactors. So this paper postulated that we had a chain reaction going on in one of the Fukushima reactors, and it was, it was turning salt water into chlorine-38. Again, it wasn't definitive. Well, on April 1st, TEPCO came out with its own report, and in it had a curious table. The table indicates that for Unit 1, there's an isotope called tellurium-128, 129, I'm sorry. And that isotope has a 70-minute half-life. Well, that can only exist if there had been a fission in the last half day, because it would have all decayed away otherwise. So the report indicated to me really quickly that, whoa, something's going on in Unit 1. Now, I read the report a little further down, and it also indicated high levels of, of iodine-131. In fact, the iodine levels in Unit 1 are 10 times higher than they are in Units 2 and 3. Now, if they all shut down at the same time, that can't happen. So where's the iodine coming from? Where's the tellurium coming from? Where's the chlorine coming from? And here is the update from Health Canada for the 1st of April. Please note, starting April 1st, 2011, the daily dose data will be available for select stations across Canada and will only be updated three times a week. However, Health Canada will continue to monitor the data on a daily basis. So they've stopped testing as well around the 25th, it appears, because levels were so low. Yet, if we look at the... Uh, plume, the darker color is a uh, concentration slightly diluted, and then the medium orange color is still slightly diluted, so it's not completely diluted, and it is being carried well over the Pacific towards Canada, and it's moving north. So this is cumulative, because these isotopes last 30 years, some 60 years at smaller half-lifes and even thousands of years for some of the more toxic elements being produced and vented. Now, this is a website, German website, it's www.dwd.de, and if you use a translator, you can get a good idea of what is going on with it. It has many of the loops and predicted loops for the next few days, so 
the loop that we just saw was uh, predicted for till April 7th. And since CAD is only updating it three times a week now, we will not see these concentration levels or have any uh, actual particulate numbers from the government of Canada so that we know uh, that there is airborne materials that if they are ingested, they go from low level to extremely high level radiation and uh, cannot be expelled from the body or else migrate to certain parts in the body like strontium 90 would to the bone marrow as uh, is being told now in Japan they're having bone transfers or uh, bone marrow trans transplants for the uh, workers that were exposed to gamma rays and that type of thing. Now the uh, number one reactor is still partially uh, under a fissionable condition uh, as reports are showing millions of times higher levels today as of April 5th. So why is Canada shutting the uh, tap off on information and data recording and not at least giving s simple health advisories to the public so that they might be able to avoid <coughs> some of the particulate ore and uh, the steam venting which is 200 tons of water a day in a complete uh, loss cooling effort uh, and most of that and much of that is turning into steam the rest is draining into the ocean and uh, that steam is also seeding clouds and that is the weather front that moves offshore not towards Japan so numbers may be low in Japan uh, but a, a lot of the concentrations are moving offshore and into the Pacific winds so we need daily numbers we need uh, newspaper updates on the front page if the health of Canada is a concern to those media outlets uh, or they are just ignoring their profit margin and uh, they will also suffer from this as well as the medical industry uh, will be overwhelmed so while they talk about an iPod tax I think that we are entitled to have proper information on our health and there is your plume most all missing Tokyo so numbers will not be elevating in Tokyo I want you in my arms when I want you and all your charms whenever I want you all I have to do is dream Night or day.